What is going on, everybody, and welcome to another weekly update. And what I like to do in these videos is provide you guys some upcoming earnings, some upcoming events to get you prepared for the week ahead. If that sounds like something you're interested in, consider subscribing, as I do also provide technical analysis that typically comes out on Sundays as well. So if you don't feel like you want to listen to this video, you can go over my technicals uh, where I get more into the charts as, as opposed to what my overall thesis is for the current upcoming market. And if you're also interested, you can uh, check me out at X um, at Hemi137 as I do provide a daily pulse on the market there as well. So go ahead and drop a thumbs up and let's get this thing kick started. Again, there's not a lot of things currently going on. You have to understand that the next two weeks would be pretty dull, in my opinion. There's some really interesting news that's going on that's, again, heavily waiting on the fact that we are coming in for a hard landing. Uh, there's a soft landing approach. This narrative that's being pushed out there is not true at all. And this is why I point to a lot of earning cycles. Uh, despite the narrative and everything, you have to ultimately understand that things are in very bad shape. If you're in a debt-based system, this is what happens when, in, when rates increase uh, to the extent that they are. And the longer they hold them here, the more damage it will do to the economy. Uh, this is why a lot of, like, we just saw China just a couple months ago or started doing quantitative easing. They're doing whatever they can because they've essentially, what they've done is destroy the consumer so much that it takes them giving them money and hoping that they come back. And again, what you're currently seeing is right now people's savings are being drained. Uh, people are racking up debt. All these other things are occurring. And you have to understand the people, when they talk about, well, when interest rates cuts, people are just going to come flooding back. That is not the case, right? Like if you leave interest rates for a long period of time, you got people skipping mills, you got families moving in together. You have all these things occurring. People can't just turn around. They have to build their confidence back up to go out and want to spend excess money on their, uh, you know, their Chipotle or fast food or go out and essentially buy a coffee, right? They don't have the excess cash to do that right now. This is why you're seeing a lot of big names get absolutely obliterated right now. And so with that being said, uh, if you can hold out and you are stashing up cash for the next move, uh, you will be rewarded and understand that when times are good is when you need to be saving to take advantage of the times that are bad. And so with that being said, uh, we are, aren't really anticipating much this week, but ultimately understand we are getting in ready for another earnings mode after this week. And we get front loaded with a lot of information all at one time. And so that's what we need to be paying attention to. So with that being said, um, let's look over the past week. There's some interesting information that has come out. Again, all this stuff is pointing to that we are looking for a hard landing. We need the yield curve inversion. Uh, once that starts to occur, again, the Fed will have to be reactionary. It's not just going to be something that's going to be scheduled and going to start random cutting. It's going to mean that things are in a really bad state. You're going to draw a new fear uh, that we're in a recession. That's when you start pricing in a recession at that point. We haven't done that yet. Uh, we've seen tech get smashed pretty hardcore about two two years ago now. Uh, and we've seen them bottom when that was that official bottom. We don't know. We won't know until after the fact. But um, again, a lot of things just have not recovered like they have been. You have to ultimately understand that we've come from a decade of a lot of free flowing money and low um, free flowing money in a low interest rates when people uh, took advantage of it. Right. And so on times like this. Uh, people are trying to get out of houses now with all the equity that's built up. But you have to understand nobody is buying right now. Nobody can afford to qualify for that home. So people that are still price gouging are starting to see their houses sit on the market for, you know, 30 plus days. Now, there are some markets that like Las Vegas is doing better. People are moving to small towns where it's cheap and driving up pricing. And people that buy homes now will be underwater in that house for a decade. Uh, so these are things you have to understand what's currently going on. People are skipping meals, right? There's a lot of things that are going on that people are trying to do to save money. So with that being said, uh, 275 large companies, essentially they have declared bankruptcy through May, which is the second highest since 2010. Personal 
interest payments on percentages of disposable personal income spiked to 2.5, the highest since the 2008 crisis. Index of buying conditions is now 27 points below the previous all-time record low in the 1980s. And then you have, uh, again, the stock market has been pushed up by the MAG-7, and it really hasn't even been the MAG-7 anymore. It's really just been Apple and NVIDIA over the past couple of weeks, despite Apple having a very historic amount of buybacks and them having horrible quarters. Uh, their Vision Pro, they have essentially delayed Vision Pro 2. They have stopped the Apple vehicle. They have uh, their sales in iPads have uh, plummeted. Right. And despite all of that, they are still making all time highs. How in the world does that make sense? So you can see the manipulation that is happening. And since about two weeks ago, the Treasury has been buying bonds, two billions worth of bonds a week to keep this thing afloat. And you have to understand the importance of bond buying, because if they're not bond, if they're not buying these bonds, uh, that what's going to happen is you're going to get pensions that are going to crater. So people that are trying to go into retirement are going to be forced back into the workplace at 80 years old. If that is all they had was a pension. Uh, so these are major problems and understand that we are about a decade away from the biggest working class going into retirement and that wealth is going to transfer. And so you're starting to see a lot more houses being sold over the next uh, the next decade, and things are going to get are going to change massively over the next decade. Uh, so you have to keep that in mind. And things are looking really, really bad. And yes, they can prop up the market for so long. Uh, again, they've taken off essentially the uh, debt ceiling, and essentially are in free spending mode until a new president until the elections are over. Uh, so they're doing whatever they can to prop up the market, and they are doing just that. Uh, until after the election. And then whoever comes in, whether it's Trump or whether it's Biden, whatever field you're on, they're both playing for the same team. Ultimately, having too much government, in my opinion, is not a good thing. You want capitalism. You want people to have to work hard to be able to achieve things. And you should be uh, rewarded for that. And then to think that it's their fault, how is it their fault if they're providing jobs uh, for people to work? Right? And not everybody wants to go out and, and sacrifice weekends and long days uh to create a business but some people are and allows you to have a nine to five job to where you can go and then forget about work and just go home and do whatever you want some people want to be that hungry and driven some people don't and everybody has the right to choose what they want to do so you can't blame one or the other i just have to say well this is what you want then don't be uh upset if you don't have some some nice things right whether that's free time uh the wealth of free time or the wealth of uh, you know, money or um, material things, right? It, it all depends on the person. But nonetheless, um, again, we are in a very bad state as of right now. So much so NVIDIA is now the largest market cap, the GDP of every country in the world, but except seven. Again, so Apple and NVIDIA are holding up the market single-handedly. Uh, that should tell you something, and that should be very concerning. I do believe we are in some sort of bubble, but again, ultimately understand, I do also heavily believe in AI and robotics, uh, and they will help us with the current debt cycle that we're in. And once they start producing, I don't believe we're at that point right now, but you have to ultimately understand that the market will price that stuff in about what they're anticipating and the market will pop because again, it's way ahead of itself. Uh, it's just like the AI models, right? And chat GPT was fantastic, but you have to understand that again, we are still five to 10 years away from stuff really making that big of an impact, but the market will price in what it will look like in five to 10 years, not what's actually going on now. Then when you start seeing er earning reports aren't reflecting that, you start getting the bubble pop and then ultimately understand that those some of them are still very much uh, legit, like NVIDIA, like Tesla, uh, like Amazon, right? And Microsoft, I think, are still very legit in that they, they will make those kind of numbers in the next five to 10 years. But the problem, again, is the market will price all that stuff in now for everything to pop, everybody to try to take advantage of it, feed into the narrative. And then realize that a lot of it's about 80% of it, 90% of it's just garbage. That's the same way the dot-com thing was. People still took advantage of the dot-com thing. They didn't have anything to show for it. Most of these companies don't have anything to show for AI, but you'll have your hand full of uh, businesses that are very much legit. And so you can't mix and match between the two. 
Being said, uh, the government has spent, or Americans have spent a massive uh, $17 trillion on food in 2008, the most ever in a single year. You tell me inflation has been defeated. This is in the same year that we were told, saying we have hit us, achieved a soft landing and everything is strong and resilient. So if you want to continue to believe the narrative, go right on ahead. But that's not why I have created this channel. It's not to, judge, to, to, provide, to provide insight from this utopic perspective narrative that's being pushed out there and what is actually going on. Ultimately, understand that a lot of things really aren't black swan. It's a very rare, it's a, it's a black swan. You have to be aware of what's currently going on, the current market conditions and how it could essentially affect the narrative. Once it affects their narrative, that's when it makes a correction on the market. Then the market essentially adjusts uh, accordingly. So, and they're all well aware of this. This is why they control the narrative. This is why I talk about why they schedule things on a Friday so they can essentially close the market if they need to, address it during the weekend, throw out a bunch of, uh, more narrative they need to to uh, reassure everybody so the market doesn't crash all in one day. Uh, they're very well are very good at that nowadays. So these are things you have to keep in mind. Upcoming week, uh, we got GDP second revisions coming out on Thursday, and then we have core PC on Friday. Uh, again, not expecting much from there, but there's a potential possibility that there always can be some sort of narrative there. Again, you have to understand that the Fed will be reactionary. Uh, Powell even brought this up, right? He just talked about this a week and a half ago about how he thought the non-farms are kind of pencil whipped. Uh, so even he is, is drawing awareness. Bloomberg is drawing awareness to this. Uh, people are like, okay, uh, this is not right. Or like people are struggling. And a lot of these other news articles that we're seeing is people are in very, 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 very bad shape. And to think that, no, it's just okay, then that's not the case is would be a lie. And, and know that people are struggling, even the wealthy are struggling, and they're essentially uh, reducing uh, their exposure by shopping at Walmart, right? They're not going to Target anymore, and now Target's having to adjust because there's a lot of people that are still trying to price gouge when it comes to houses. And you have to understand that even if interest rates are cut, people aren't just going to come running back, right? You are, you are destroying the consumer. This is where deflationary... Uh, starts coming in because you are destroying the consumer. They have no valuable assets. All they have is their home right now. And that is diminishing quickly as we're seeing more and more homes that are on the market for longer than 30 days. And see, these are all the major things or issues that are occurring. It takes time to play out. A lot of the loans need to come to maturity for a lot of these businesses, uh, but more and more are becoming bankrupt. So the longer that we have these interest rates high, it's going to have a bigger impact on the market. And so, again, when it comes to houses, uh, the Fed, I believe, want housing prices to come down, which will take longer. And so they have to wait a little bit longer before they can start cutting uh, for that to happen. But you also have the political pressure that Biden administration wants them to at least be a cut. One cut's not going to do anything because it's not going to draw back demand. Uh, so what they're doing is they're subsidizing a lot of these other different things with taxpayer dollars uh, to give people that shouldn't be allowed to have a loan uh, because of their credit score, uh, because they can't pay back uh, debt and they just want it paid off. And that was another big thing that came up as well is there's about, you know, 20, I think like $26 uh, billion in debt that we're student loan debt forgiveness that we've done is essentially adding to our debt. And so why are we paying off people's student loans and adding that to our debt? So you're essentially telling everybody, uh, that these people can't pay their loans. So since you pay taxes anyway, just go ahead and pay for it is what's going on. So you got a lot of really shady things going on and people are getting fed up with it. And we're, we're getting to the fork in the road very, very soon as we're seeing a lot of these more of these articles come out before we're getting that in essentially these earning cycles, which these earning cycles are reflecting that. So, and then upcoming events, monetary policy is until the 31st core, not to the 11th. Uh, earnings will be around the 15th. I haven't updated this yet, but I'll start updating it probably next week uh, so we can kind of see where those are at. Uh, but ultimately, we are looking around the 15th before we start getting big bank reports on Friday. Uh, in case if something bad happens again, uh, we can take it into the weekend. Uh, no big adjustments on these. Uh, there's uh, SPX has gone up a little bit because of the PCE. Tesla has gone up a little bit just because if there's any kind of inflation issues, uh, tech will typically be hit pretty quick. Uh, and then you got JPM has gone up a point. And again, it doesn't move much, but when it does, uh, they're anticipating because we got earnings coming up. Um, a lot of potential issues. Again, we don't really know exactly what's going to happen, uh, especially when you're 
you're kind of basing everything off of headline news and the Fed's going to have to react. Uh, so you definitely won't be able to pinpoint when that's going to happen. But if they can, again, they will push us off. They're aiming for next March is when they're looking to start cutting rates. And the Fed have said this. Powell has already greased the skids, try to make those cuts next week if possible. Again, if possible. And that never happens, right? They're always reactionary. They have to, they're more reactionary than they're actually, you know, proactive on anything. So when it does happen, again, it will be a big event. And then that will, when you start seeing them rapidly cut, now the first cut, isn't going to do much of anything. Again, there's a very delayed reaction for anything to really even happen. So if they start rapidly cutting, again, emphasis on the rapidly cutting, that's when things start to price in a recession. That's when you need to be aware that things are going to start getting bad. Now, it may just be maybe one cut and then realize, wow, this is really out of control. We're going to have to start dropping a full percentage point. That's when we start pricing in a recession. So with all that being said, again, don't really have much else going on. I think this week will be pretty quiet. I think we are waiting for the next earnings cycle to come around. We're waiting again for something to buckle to crash, whether that's overnight repo, whatever the case is, that's what we are waiting for uh, before the Fed react. And again, depending on the size of their cuts is really, really going to matter. Uh, so you can't take it much past that. You can assume all day long, but ultimately we're waiting for that event to occur. We don't know what particular event will happen. The Fed will come in out, or the Fed will come out and announce it a couple of days before. That will allow you to take your bond buy play. It's something I've been waiting on as well. Um, but you have to wait until they take that action, and then they'll t they'll disclose what date they're going to do it. It's typically, I think, I believe, like a week out or a couple of days out before they actually uh, do it. So it allows you to take position before that happens. So, uh, which again, I think is going to happen in the next couple um, of months just because of the setup that currently is. If for some chance it doesn't happen in the next, you know, uh, before the end of the year, they will definitely push this out till after Christmas. And then uh, March, again, I think it's going to be a free for all. That's when our normal cycle kicks off. I talk about this every, uh, around every um, winter time, February, March period. When we're essentially uh, going over Q4 earnings is when essentially we get we sell off pretty heavy anyway during that time of the year. I think that would be the perfect timing uh, if it doesn't go off before then. Uh, again, there's a lot going on to keep what you're currently seeing up. A lot of people are in really bad shape, which is again not it's not it's not something you can really judge unless you are watching earnings, unless you're watching the consumer themselves to see what's really going on. And again, that has a very delayed reaction for you to actually see that reflected in the market. But then again, the market will price that in and then it will recover. Then they'll start turning on the money printers and hoping very badly that the consumer comes back quickly because you start getting deflationary it can happen very, very quickly, which we're already starting to see. And then it's a reactionary thing like, oh, we put too much pressure on. So if you made it this far, go ahead and drop a thumbs up. And until next time, I'll see you guys later.